Let's talk about time. Time waits for nobody. We've talked about this a few times. We've uh, brought it up. Well, I've brought it up that regardless of the fact, if you are working on your business or not working on your business, the time is going to move forward. I have said for many years, it's going to take you two to five years to really get your business up and running. And there are some people who are listening. I had the pleasure, privilege of talking to a client. We've worked together about a year and a half ago for, you know, it was was literally a three-year journey. And my client told me they were in the position to get seven-figure loans based on what happened almost three years ago. Let's dissect that. Let's turn this into the case study. Uh, the client had an e-commerce business. The client was doing, I believe, one one point five million. We were at the point of doing half a million a month. But not to throw people under the bus, there were some situations where the client was the workhorse. The client was making all the moves, was doing all the work, and there was a partners there was two partners there was one i just said from our first conversation he's got to go he wasn't really contributing anything to the business he had made a small one-time effort into the business and he was getting crazy money so we had to get rid of him then the other partner had to get rid of him which happened when the online business imploded but because of the base, and the base consisted of holding company LLC structure. The client was working really hard. There was some a few, there was a bumpy year. Last year was the bumpy year because of the first partner got rid of him very quickly. The second partner that had to peter out. And then there was this adjustment phase. And now networking, getting out there, doing what they need to do. Because of the things that happened almost three years ago, they're now in a position to get seven-figure loans. And then people, because there's two ways you can get these loans. You can get these loans through a traditional bank, or you can get these loans. Uh, there are funding sources out here that will charge higher interest rates than banks, but not like crazy interest rates. But in any event, whether you're going to get the loans from the bank where you're going to get loans from these private lenders, you got to show tax returns. You got to show the ability to repay. You got to show bank statements. And this is something that I see a lot of people are not discussing. The other day, I had this uh, yard bird put on there. I have a $50,000 credit card, but only make $40,000 a year. How many of you out there have $50,000 credit cards? Anyone that has a $50,000 credit limit with American Express has been through a financial review. Uh, most cards will top you out at around thirty-five k without asking for additional paperwork. If you are an authorized user on a credit card with a 50, yeah, you know, you can have it. But just based on this income, mm-mm. and I'm about to show you something here, too. Give me a second to pull it up. The average credit card limit in the US. Okay. So we're gonna let me blow this up so y'all can see it in full color. And this is the average. This is not the exceptional. This is not the atypical. This is the average. And let's go here, roll over to here, and boom, shaka, laka, laka. The average credit limit for the preferred car is around $10,000. And let's go through this. And then you'll see 8,000. And you'll see, um, Chase Sapphire does go up to 100K. I don't have 100K. Uh, American Express, if you spend crazy, your platinum 
credit card will let you do 100K in one transaction. But pretty much across the board, the average credit, this is per credit card. Now, the, the pickle or whatever his name is, he could have $50,000 in credit limits across four or five cards. But one credit card with $50,000 limit, I would say no. And if Mr. Pickle wants to come on here and show bank statements and credit card statements, let's do it. Anywho, I bring this up because there's been a lot of tomfoolery in the credit repair business credit industry. And let's, you know, we talked about this before, but we'll go over it. There's vendor credit and there is, let's say you're, you're broke Dick Danny and you want a Ford truck and you go out and you start an LLC, you have it for six months to get your pay decks. And let's say you have $5,000 to put down. If you know the right people to talk to the fleet manager, you can go and you can walk out, drive out with a Ford F-250 on business credit. Now, why would they do that? Well, if you're buying a truck, most people buy trucks like that because they're going to use them to work. And since you're going to be working, you're going to be making money. And since you need your truck to make money, there's a very good chance you're going to pay your car payment. High, very, very high. Now, that's one form of business credit. And let's say go to Ford and they say you're approved for $80,000 in business credit. Someone can come on here on YouTube and say, look, I got a client approved for $80,000 in business credit and they will be telling the truth. They just leave out the details that that's not a visa. That's not a line of credit where you can get cash. These are specific credit lines to specific vendors. And if you need a truck and that works for you, cool. But I just don't like the way that it's presented that these people are getting these extremely large credit limits and lines on marginal income. I, I just don't believe it. Unless you line on your, your income statements. Now, that, that could get a little dicey. That could get, let's say you go ahead and you have a good credit score. And you go ahead and you fudge your numbers like significantly. You know, you go 10,000 over what you make. They ain't coming after you for that. But let's say you make 50 and you pull an application that you make 250. So you default on that loan and they find out that you lied. You can't bankrupt out of that because you committed a felony and you can't get the privilege and the freedom of a bankruptcy to adjudicate your damage is due to a felony. So there's a lot of that's going on. And right now, the no doc loan or the low doc loan is back. And I have a feeling what's going to happen. I could be wrong, but I have a feeling. So how does one set themselves up to get positioned for a seven-figure business loan? First off the rift, uh, I don't want to hear any people talking about, man, they ain't for the average man. No, you, you need to be making six figures. If you want a $1 million, $2 million, $3 million loan, at a minimum, you need to be making six figures. At a minimum, they would prefer that, let's say the loan's for a million, let's say you do two fifty, three hundred. dollars that's what they would prefer for you to be to get that loan and typically the monthly payment on the million dollar loan depending on if it's a mortgage line of credit it's going to be four to five k uh, a month depending upon the interest now we've talked about the incomes here before the average income household income is fifty five thousand so you're making fifty five thousand you're not going to be able to get a million dollar loan you're not I'd be able to get a credit card with a hundred thousand dollar limit. It's just not economically feasible. And someone actually put it up here. He said, I have great credit, but I can't get these credit cards because my income is low. As they say out here on these mean internet streets, let's keep it a buck. If you want to get the golden stuff, the good stuff, you got to build a business and you got to have adequate cash flow 
to get these loans, to get these credit cards. And as I said in the other video of the day, once you get past 100, 150, unless you just have some ostentatious spending habits, it's just kind of hard to get, you know, it, there are people out there who are going to pop, you know, 5k for a t-shirt. There are people out here who are going to pay, um, you know, $30,000 for a charter jet, which I just, let's talk about that. The big thing is I've, I heard Chuck Smith talk about it when he used to play for the Atlanta Falcons. And he said one time he chartered a jet to go just like a regular trip. It was 20, it was twenty thousand dollars to charter that jet. He said I could have bought a plane ticket first class for one hundred and fifty bucks. He said I didn't get there any faster. <laughs> it was just the ideal of we chartered a jet, and that that's kind of where I'm at because, you know, like Grant Grant I, he has a jet, but Grant might speak in two or three cities in one day. And then you multiply that times three or four times a month, then the cost of having a private jet makes a lot of sense because for you to be in two or three cities flying commercial in one day is pretty hard. It's almost impossible. And this is why many corporations have these private jets because they will have their top people go scope out job sites, check on plants, and they may literally make five or six stops in a day and may do this for three or four days whereas they couldn't do it they simply could not do it for commercial uh sam walton had a fleet of planes because he wanted to check out the customer experience of walmart there was no other way because arkansas just didn't have the infrastructure they didn't have things you needed so he had to buy a plane he bought the plane for practical reasons you know, the man is supposedly cheap and the man left his family billions upon billions. Just go ahead and do a Google search. Sam Walton's fleet of planes. I think currently they have 22 planes. Now say this because you want to start playing big boy games, big girl games. You need to get you some big boy money. Uh, where we're going with this, and I'm going to get into exactly what we did with this client you're going to have to perform and you're going to have to get some results to get that cake and that icing. And then I, I will be the messenger of truth. You can light your pitchforks. You, you can light your torches. You can light your pitchforks. You can come at me because regardless of how you may feel about this, the rules of engagement are not going to change. They're just not. All right. So how does this happen? Uh, the client, had did a fantastic job of getting their business up and running, but they, they were operating on straight cash. Um, I will say at one point, the client probably had half a million dollars in a safe deposit box, cash money. So they were making money, but there was no corporate structure. There was no holding company. And this was one of the hardest, hardest parts that, the client had to put themselves on salary and pay. I mean, it's paying, I think, four or five thousand dollars per pay period. I think it was almost twenty thousand dollars a month taxes. And this is something else that you're gonna have to do if you want to get these high-level business loans. You're gonna have to take it on the chin with these taxes. Because essentially, when you go to a bank and you put your tax forms down. And let's say you, like my banker, she told me this like three years ago. She said, people come in here and they say they make 250, they show us their tax returns, they depreciate everything, and they've only made $50,000. And I told her, I was like, this is common. I see it all the time. I know of people who do this stuff. And then when they try to go for one of these big boy loans, in their mind, they're like, I make 250, I make 300, I make 400, I make half a million dollars a year, player. And they do, but they don't want to pay taxes on that half million and they don't pay taxes. So when they go in there to the bank and it's like, yeah, I can get a million dollar loan. And then banks say, well, the most we can approve you for is 80K. Like, what? Wait. Wait a minute. And this was 
much to the client's um, belief of buying into the process, they paid those taxes, which was hard. It was hard. But that is the thing, because the first year, the tax forms were filed. The second year, the tax forms were filed. <clears throat> and the third year, and that was like, boom, here are these tax funds. And people are like, yeah, here's money. We're throwing money at you. That's what's take anyone that tells you you're gonna get a million dollar loan and legally <clears throat> look, let's be really really clear if you lie on the financials if you submit fake documents yes you can get this loan you can also get a jail cell <laughs> i'm just saying now if you're gonna do it legit you're not gonna do this on 50k you're not gonna do it on 75k at one point your score was worth more than your income. We we're now at an age where your income is very critical. How many of you know that if you can prove there are banks and that if you can prove and you got a decent credit score and you provide 12 months of bank statements, they'll do a mortgage for you. Yeah, they'll do a mortgage for you right now. 12 months of bank statements. A lot of these community banks, a lot of these smaller banks where you go in and actually talk to someone, put down those bank statements, they verify they're real, you get that mortgage. We're moving toward, because there's been so much financial um, fuckery, <laughs> just, just call it what it is, that now people want to know if you can make the money to pay them back. And that this is a very real in serious thing and so many people are not really paying attention to this now you got to have the llc structure you have to have income from the llc structure and pay your taxes that's what you got to do to get these loans and some else too by actually running the business making money paying taxes it changes you as a person. There's a reason that certain business owners act kind of funny because they're going through some things that you and the average person is not going through. And you're thinking like, that's kind of crazy. If that was me, I wouldn't act that way. More than likely because you wouldn't act that way. It will never be you. I have a friend who he does well. And when I say, well, net out at seven figures a year. He does not spend money. And I'll tell you why. He does not spend money from his current year because he almost went bankrupt doing that ball of life. So what he does, he tightened it up for two years and the money for this year's expenditure was already in the bank. January 1st, Budget was already set. The money was there. So the money that is made this year, it goes into an account. Taxes are paid. And then he'll set his budget once taxes are paid for 2020 around sometime December. Well, it's like, he'll look at what's in there. And this way, he's just like, you know, it just took a lot of stress off of me. And I had to change my ways. Um, we're going to see a very different credit environment. You can already see it with the credit cards because when I was a young buck in the United States Army, my first credit card had a limit of $1,500. Uh, first Union Bank, they're no longer ex around. They got absorbed by, I believe, Wachovia and then Wachovia absorbed by Wells Fargo because it used to be the Bank of Atlanta. How many of you Atlanta folks remember the Tilly? Take me by the Tilly. Well, I got that card up to like $5,000 in like nine months. I was only making probably 15,000, 16,000 a year. And if I had kept on, I could have kept that card going. And this is the thing that kind of gets you indoctrinated into the culture of debt because you're just like, I have this little piece of paper, this little digital number that says I am good for this money in the future so you're sacrificing your future for your whims and wants of today and that creates a very interesting dynamic 
And, you know, there are many people who've asked me about private banking, house banking. I have a question for you. If it's very esoteric, and this isn't to say it doesn't work. I'm not even going to say it doesn't work. I've never used any because I have no need. But the more esoteric it is, the more likely it is something that a product is for poor people and it will keep you poor. And the reason is there's the mainstream banking and credit unions. And then there's these esoteric funding sources. Um, how many of you know of factoring? Factoring is like an extension of credit, but it's very short term. It's like 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And the interest rate is insane. But whenever I would order a container of furniture from Coaster, I went through a factoring company who was like, bam, here's your money, Coaster. And then once they hit the, I mean, literally, I had 45 days after I got the container to pay them back. It was like, we got we to gotta get this moving. And this is why I run my business totally differently today than I used to. Oh, it's tax season, right? I have a feeling you're going to see in the coming weeks a lot of people angry because, once again, these tax cuts. Tax cuts today sacrifice the future. And what you exchange your future for, some people are going to be hurt. Some people are going to be salty. Some people are going to be real salty. Now, let's talk about running a business where you do not need business credit. This isn't to be taken as you should not develop business credit. The best time to develop business credit is when you don't need it. Best time ever. And typically, if you're running a proper business, you don't want to start your business off on loans. Like Facebook. Facebook did not start off on loans. Facebook started on venture capital, whereas these people came in and say, hey, Here's some money. We're going to buy a piece of the company. And we're all hoping and praying that the company will become more valuable in the future where we can sell our stock and get our returns back. That is not a loan. <laughs> That's good. It is not a loan. And this is why so many people get in trouble. Um, I would say some small business administration loans for a business you know, not kind of sort of, but you know in your soul going to make money. That could be cool. That's what they're there for. Let's say you have a business. You've been in business five years. You've grown as far as you can. You need like a million dollars right now to hire more people. And by hiring more people, that's matriculate into two or three million where you could pay the loan back, have some money to pay your taxes and put money in your pocket. That makes sense. That makes sense. But this is what doesn't make sense. Going out. <laughs> getting a business loan and you have no clue how you're going to make money. And this is what a lot of people do when they take out extension, you know, they, they max out their credit cards. They go out and get lines of credit. They they're like, I hope I can make some money. They don't know how they're going to make money. And that's how people get in trouble. And, you know, since you're watching this channel, money, income and profit, we don't want you to get up in trouble. And this is some that we need to talk about. You may have the greatest ambition in the world. You may have a killer business ideal. Regardless of, unless it's exceptional and you're atypical, you're still looking at a two to five year journey. And this is why. You look good. Your teeth are white. You smell good. All that. That's great but you don't know anything about running the business. You're smart. You'll figure it out two to five years. You'll have mentors. And this, and this is people who surround themselves with mentors. It still takes two to five years. And I, I should make that point of uh, people who don't have mentors and they do eventually figure it out. It could be 10 to 15, maybe 20 years. There are many people who just like, I am not going to go out and get a mentor. I'm not going to read a book. I'm just going to sit here because I know I am the man. I am the one and I am going to make all of this money. It's just, I got to keep working hard. 
Mm. I, I'll tell you something that's very interesting here in regards to hard work. I don't work nowhere near as hard as I did in the storage auction business as I do today. Not even close. I could take a weekend off if I want. Middle of the day, you know, if I'm ahead of the schedule, if I want to take a nap, I'll take a nap. I could not do that in the storage auction business. No, 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 no. It was balls to the walls. It was six, it was six to seven days a week for years. And once you get past the gauntlet, and there's going to be a period in everyone's business, everyone's journey, it's just going to be tough. Just once you start greeting businesses and stirring up stuff, you don't know what's coming through the door. I have a friend, he started a business, and he was dependent upon the government. And when he got his business up and running, he was moving for about eight, nine months, all look good. Government changed the rules, put him out of business. And this is why, you know, there are many people who do business with the government. It works out fine. I just pretty much it's not going to do anything with the government. I am not messing with the government. I'm a private sector type dude all day long. And that's not, he did his research. He knew his industry. And th this is stuff that happens when you have a business. Good point. Disrupted mail. Killer ideal. A lot of y'all still missed the channel. It was working. I not expect to be identified and aligned with red pill and MGTOW channels. And I was like, well, this ain't good. This, this is not good. Once again, I started off the best intentions. I researched the market. There's still a need. I am going to do something after it money income and profit.com rolling, but it, it cannot be that same kind of presentation. And by many YouTube standards, the channel had 6,000 subscribers and it did 18K in eight months. There are many YouTubers who would have loved that, but I was like, this ain't gonna work. I mean, I, I make more money doing something else, but you gotta get started. You, you gotta get started. You, you have to figure some stuff out. And instead of looking at existing businesses, look at something that doesn't exist. All right, let's put this here. All right, Yeti. How many of you have these cups? I really got introduced to it about two years ago. And you can go to ink.com and read their story. These guys, you know why they started this? It was college students, and they liked to go to the beach and have cookouts and stuff, and all the coolers would just fall apart. So what? Hey, hey, dude, what, dude? Let's make our own cooler. Yeah. And they made their own cooler. Super tough. And then people are like, hey, man, that's a nice cooler. We'll make us one. Okay. And before you know it, they were making coolers all day long. They're like, let's form a company. And that company did close to, I think, matter of fact, I'll actually show it to you so I don't misspeak. It came out of a need. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, God. One of the founders is getting divorced. I already got divorced. I just saw that. I didn't even know. Hold on a sec. How two brothers turn a $300 cooler into a $450 million coal brand. So I will put this up here so you can figure it out. It tells their story there. And once again, these guys have become fantastically wealthy, making a cooler. Now, I have a question. Do you need a cooler or do you want a cooler? Some people need coolers. Fishermen, people doing certain things, hikers, uh, backpackers, they actually need coolers. I don't need a cooler. I just like using these things because they will change your life. And, and they're not cheap. They're like 50 bucks for this tumbler and for, uh, probably have at least $500 worth of that stuff around the house. But 
go ahead and check it out and start thinking in your life what exists that you know it's not being done correctly you're unhappy with the service it it, it could be a little thing like a cooler what i'm saying is everyone needs to start a real business and let me go ahead and give you the the breakdown all right so you start a business you start a real business There are many people who say don't do this and I'm going to bring it up because this is how I did it. Since most of the country is just literally two checks away from financial ruin, as we've seen with this government shutdown, if they had missed one more check, you would have saw some nasty stuff. I really think that TSA and the air traffic controllers were going to get together and just shut it down because there was no reason for this thing. But looking at what happened with them, just two checks, and there were many people who was like, they should have a savings account. They should have an emergency fund. And to those people, I would say, you just stupid. You're just saying that because, you know, you your dude is losing. If someone took or two checks away and said, look, fool, you still got to come to work. You still got to spend gas money. You would be a very cranky camper. So it, it's just been madness with that. But since people don't have money, and there's something that I'm going to put into investing yourself, I will touch on it in the basic financial education. But you got to accelerate your income. There's a whole foundational thing you must build before you start a business. And I will get a little racial here. If you're black, you've got roadblocks and hindrances that don't exist for immigrants. You ever wonder why immigrants come here and they just ball out of control? They don't have the psychological baggage that a lot of Americans do. Notice I say black Americans. Um, there are black Americans or white Americans who have the emotional baggage of generational poverty that has messed up their mindset. Whereas this immigrant that comes here is like, whoa, 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 whoa what is that? That's opportunity. Yo, E2, yo. You smell the money? I smell the money, man. I smell, whoa, the money everywhere. Oh, my God. What are you complaining about? They don't have that baggage. They don't have those entitlements. So as an indigenous American in these shores, you got to get past all of that crap and then build your business where they just come in. We don't have that. Just boom. We off to the races. It's like I'm in America. I, I I can have as many goats as I want. Back home, I can have one goat. Here, I can have a hundred goats. Oh, <laughs> oh man, I'm erect. You know, and that's something that a lot of people don't really get into because I got into my psychological journey because the psychological journey must happen before manifestation of money. You got to get all this right. That boarding house. Man, I had to deal with a lot of stuff in there. Like, oh, you do, you do a good day's work, you do a hard job, and you get laid off. You don't, you don't think, you don't understand how much that messed me up. It's top salesman working the job, just all jelly on the spot, being very helpful, and I got let go. That's like, I mean, that really messed with me. I wasn't used to doing a really good job and. Told hit the streets, dude. That shook a fundamental core value of mine to the bone. And that's one of the things that I got disruptive during that period. I got disruptive with uh, being married to someone who did not have my best interests at heart. I got disrupted. I lost my job. I lost my car. I lost my home. I lost my everything. So I was just sitting there. I was a mess for two, two years, just like. How did this happen? I'm not a bad person. I wouldn't beat my wife. I wasn't cheating on my wife. How did this happen? And I would see people who were cheating on them and they're married. I, I know a dude used to work with him. I ain't mentioned his name. Dude used to cheat on his wife every week. They still married. They have four kids. 
Let me say this again. He cheated on his wife every week. They used to say, oh, you know, he'll pay a bill. They still married. I'm just sitting there like, what? Yeah, yeah, that that right there, because I ran into the other day, and we just started chopping it up. It was like, man, you look the same. I'm like, you look the same. He's like, you know, I got around. I slowed up a little bit. I was like, what do you mean slowed up? It's not a week. It's what, every month? He's nah, man, about every quarter. Every six months, you know, I got to get a little strange. But, you know, most part, I'm in the house, you know. <laughs> it's just like. So for many of us, we have to mentally just take, you know, screw up. This is a marine tactic. This is why they call them jarheads. Essentially, they unscrew the top of their heads, dump all that stuff out, and then put all these marine tactics in their head and screw the lid back on. That's what you got to do if you want to be successful in the East United States of America because it's so mental that it's crazy. It is such a big part of this. And dealing with my client in the seven-figure loan, it was a huge mental shift. The client was extremely talented. I said, you're going to be a multimillionaire. I mean, seriously. And I wasn't just saying that to blow smoke up their butt. No, it's going to happen. It's going to happen because of the hustle. And you've got all these folks holding you back. Every, I mean, you know, I don't think this is a bad thing, but she bought her sister a car while, who was in college and paid cash. How many of you can do that? You can't even buy your own car and pay in cash. So a big part of this mental journey was understanding that being in the United States of America the game is rigged for business owners and rich people. Everything is set for him. And um, what's her name? Alexis Ortiz Cortez. You know, she's talking a powerful game. A lot of people buying in, but she's just one person. Until everybody, I mean, until 25% of the country starts acting like her, I don't really think much is going to change. Because moving to the other side, we're not going to say it, the dark side. We're going to say moving to the other side. You will experience to start to see things in a totally different light. Because right now, there are many people who don't want to build a business. They want to, and I'm going to do this video talking about money frame. It's going to be seriously powerful. And I almost did it in a live stream, but you never know how these live streams are going to be. So I'm going to do it in a regular video. But people want comfort, wealth, safety, security in this small frame. It ain't happening. The frame ain't big enough for all that. And people just don't understand that. They're like, I want government health care at a low price, but I don't want to pay higher practice prices. I don't want to pay higher taxes. At some point, some's got to give. And this is why. I got out of my cheapness. I used to be so cheap. And it wasn't because it was, this is what the rich folks do. It was just, I had a poverty mindset. I was so cheap because it was so hard to get a dollar. It was so hard to make money that I just couldn't let it go. I, you know, first world problems here. I'll just be, just be plain about it. But it took me five years after I left the storage auction game to get to the point of going in malls and buying stuff retail. It was that it was five years. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was just, ah, I can't let that money go. I can't let that money go. And what really pulled me out of it was the sale of my book. And then this financial abundance. And I was like, wait a minute, why were you being so cheap and frugal to begin with? Cause you didn't have nothing. Now you got all kinds of abundance. You can help out your sick friend. You can, you can do all these things. And then slowly I moved over to a real abundance mindset. I didn't have <laughs> this mindset. I had a poverty mindset. And this is how I recognize it on Facebook and other places. When I see it, I was like, oh, I know exactly where you're coming from because I used to be you. And it's such a journey mentally. And then when you're hanging out, with a bunch of people with a poverty mindset, it's reinforced. 
uh, there's some people, I'm not mentioning names, they got it all day long. All day long. And they're freaked out about having a lot of money. I see some people loosening up, <laughs> taking trips. It, it, it's just crazy. And that's part of it. And then another part is you got to allow yourself and give yourself permission to be rich. That is a big trick because there are many of you who could be rich. Once again, there is self-employment. Well, first of all, you got to let's go through the, the whole phase. First of all, stage one, you got to get your money game together, meaning you got to learn how to manage money. Mandatory. Because even if you somehow supersede that and make more money because you lack money management skills, you will end up back in the same place that you started. Then you want to get to self-employment where you can manage your time. See, the first stage is to manage your money. So your money ain't managing you. You know, I say this all the time. I have to start saying again. If you don't manage your money, your money's going to manage you. And you ain't going to like the way your money will put you on that whole stroke. You ain't going to like it at all. Stage one, and then stage two, self-employment, manage your time. Then stage three, 10 to 20 times average income, which sets you up for stage four. However, stage three is more than enough for most people. I mean, many of you got to stage three, you'd be like, this is awesome. This is like best thing ever. And then, you know, wealthy, getting wealthy is just like icing on the cake. Because you can't, it's so much money, you can't spend it unless you're a crackhead. If you're a crackhead or, you know, you, you, uh, Cardi B or somebody, you know, spending like 30K for a dress. But even with, you know, based on the money she's making, even with her crazy spending, she still can stack because she's making so much money. Is is an amazing thing. And this is why, you know, I, you guys and talk to you about the truth about starting a business and that's why i keep mentioning this to the five-year thing because the client had a great hustle in the bank but the containers and the foundation they just simply weren't there and at some point they will catch up with you you know and because the containers and stuff were set up and the process was set up this one year where she didn't have a lot of money coming in she was able to live for a year <laughs> and you know her rent is ridiculous but she was able to manage it because she had prepared for the days that would rain all right so let's see what's up in these comments what's up devon melinda racing What's up, Tiger Shark? You you showing up on the regular again. 89 Dr. Funk. Devon, true. It's tough to realize that while well, young, because we start to think we have infinite amounts of time. Yeah. When you're young, you think you're invincible. What's up, Crep Junk TV? It does move slowly. What's up, Josh? Thanks for the $10 super chat. Just bought a unit with deer heads and antlers. How do I price them correctly? I remember you told the story about them. What you do is you go to, I don't even know if you can still sell this stuff on eBay. This is how much stuff's changed. But you go to eBay and then you figure out what they're selling for. And then you kind of like spook around the internet because eBay is not the only place you can sell stuff. If you have an Audi, there's a form called Audi Zine which is full of helpful tips and tools for Audi owners. But if you want to sell your car, you can sell it there. So poke around the internet, figure out where people are talking about hunting, and you might be able to sell those uh, deer heads in the form, and they just will not be as crazy as eBay people. What's up, Tiffany? All right, Tiff, you got that first Craigslist hit. Remember, that first high is the best. Um, the DSL Chronicles. What's up? Thanks for the $10 super chat. Appreciate that. The likes up all this free game. What's up, trending business? Freddie, yo, Cornelia, Anthony Merritt, Erica Nicole. Listen to Erica. Uncle G bootstrapped my business for two years 
and about to sell six figures. I made six figures, but never needed a loan. That's the first self-employment. And here's the thing. She sell it for six figures. She will have time to sit and reflect on what her next move is without worry about money. I want all of y'all to feel what that's like, because if you grew up in circumstances like I grew up in, the ability to take 30, 60, 90 days, a few years, and not worry about money, it's life changing. So congratulations, Eric and Nicole. What's up? <laughs> Jigga. Uh, the thumbnail game is changing. You ever know that some of the best performing videos have little or no text? Some there's some new I'm doing. The thanks for noticing Jigga 1017. The Baron Robert Loose. What's up, Alance? Thanks for the five dollar super chat. Eighty nine Doctor Funk Grant buys real estate around the country. That's why he has a jet and he speaks. The beauty of Grant's jet, he can expense it on his taxes. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I said, you know, he has a need for it. Like, go ahead and try to do this on paper and try to plan four or five trips in the same day. And see how hard that is in the airport. What's up, Roderick? Anthony Merritt, I want to buy a rundown tennis club from the owner, owner finance. How do I get the big boy money? That's a whole nother video. Um, question. Do you know how to run a tennis club? Because if you don't, or you're not closely affiliated with someone who does, uh, I would say don't. Uh, Duminous Bacchus with Hustlers Kung Fu University, just a one-time payment, or can I do monthly payments? Hustlers University is a set of courses as a one-time payment. Um, this is what's going to happen as I expand this. Because once again, I'm staying on point. I'm not doing anything else until I get the basic financial education course set up, which should be this week. And then we're going to go in, invest yourself. And then the third uh, tier will be a monthly deal. But the current Hustlers University, you can pay one-time fee and you get in. Yeah, I mean, when you're trying to get financing, unless you're dealing with non-traditional lenders, they're going to look at your taxes the way you filed them. And if you expensed everything, that's going to mean you did not make any money. Um, trending business. What do you think about Swift banking getting into crypto? Not going to pay any attention. Remember how everyone thought virtual reality was going to be the big thing? Virtual reality is still 10 years away from being the big thing. What's up, Black Caesar? The ball of life does not exist. Oh, it exists. It exists. Just most people never get to get there. Uh, no. But they are getting into property. Black Caesar. That would be the... Uh, of holding companies that links below too goddess i remember first union yeah i mean it be the, the one of the advantages of being older and having a good memory is you can see the cycles like let's talk about my new picture here right now you have people dressing any old way having whatever type of hairstyle they want to have that is the trend that is trendy that's culture but where i see it going and you know typically i'm two or three years ahead is we're going to go back to more formal wear i mean that's how i used to that's when i was selling office furniture so you you will see me suited and booted and with a tie and stuff because everyone else is like over here wearing their own thing like gary v he looks like a burglar with that little knit cap on right and image matters i don't care what anyone tells you um Gary has had so much success he can get away with it. But for many people, if you were just to change up your image, 
it would dramatically improve results. Uh, Erica, I was offered a factoring capital loan. Interest on those bad boys is steep. What's up, Ronald? I know, man. You know, Dr. Funk, I am just waiting. I am just waiting with bated breath. Uh, Dante J, I'm trying my best for my little corner. All right, Mark Scott. Appreciate that. Appreciate the five bucks. Fester, I love it here in Cali. Goddess, I'm experiencing that pain now. I look like I will owe the RS about 200 bucks in my whole working life. I never owed. This is some. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Write him a check done with him. That's cool. You don't really want to owe him like 200K, like one of my friends does. It's all right. He's got the money, but he just hates writing those checks. Boss life. Would you tell someone to go be a general manager or some kind of management position before starting a business? Uh, absolutely not. I would say become a commission salesperson where you have to do everything. When I was selling office furniture, I had to find my own needs. I had to set my own appointments. I had to go to the appointments. I had to do the presentations. Then I had to sell them. Then I had to manage the install. Essentially, I learned how to run a business by being a commission salesperson. And one of the things is when you're commissioned, you paying attention because you don't get the deal, you don't get money, you don't get no money, you don't eat. All right, Fester, go west, young man. <laughs> Thanks, Alice Harley, for the five dollars super chat. Uh, the YouTube algorithm was linking with them because it tends to recommend what viewers are watching to other viewers. Yes and no. Y'all, have you ever noticed how all the black YouTubers are clustered together? It's not an accident. And how certain people, like, take uh, Marcus, the tech reviewer, and look at who he's clustered with. The clustering is based upon your audience and based on your presentation. Now, this is like a slam. You know, I will let you guys know. But when I start a new channel, I'm not going to let people know until about maybe two or three months in. Because what will happen is because y'all watch these other channels, then going to what the Donna said, I would I would be talking about because the thing is what I'll be talking about. I should be clustered with other channels who are talking about the same thing. But because of the viewership habits of black people on YouTube, I could be talking about something totally different and get pulled into dissimilar channels who are talking about vastly different things. And the only thing that we have in common is we all black. But see, I know a way around that. Awesome, Esther. <laughs> Erica. Yeah, I mean it's 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 very interesting. Festus living at the Marriott. All right. What's up, rugged collars? Thank you, Fester. Really, oh, that's that's the that's the name of the game. Does when folks say the meek and the humble in terms of of inheriting earth, meek and humble means serving. Business people look to serve the most amount of people possible and are rewarded. Pretty much, I, I've actually got a video on that because there, there there's this thing that's all poor people going to inherit the earth or be running stuff. No, they're not. It, it's not happening. It's never going to happen. What do you mean, Roderick? And then Dr. Funk, if Trump closes the government down after what he just did, it would be political suicide. 
Uh, there's a part of his base. I don't care what he does. They even him. But the independents, the folks who like not Hillary, they're gone. Let him pull that crap again. Uh, if anything, he would uh, probably go for a national emergency. It's not as politically risky. What's up, Wayne Johnson? Lance Brown, thanks for the five dollars super chat. Morning, Glennon. When you read, do you prefer Kindle, Nook, or paper books? Also, what time of the day do you read? I actually don't read. There's a reason for that. Since I'm going in a different direction, I don't want to subconsciously inherit someone else's stuff. So this year, I'm pretty much not reading anything that I will talk about. I may read something else. Like there's this book that's about discipline that I got on Audible. But in my core, I'm not reading anything. Adonis, a lot of my folks in my current side business trucking, hating on Indian or Slavic folks because they're stacking the oil and gas station and rig companies. I'm looking at their playbook. They just don't have the baggage that we do, man. It, it, it's crazy. And now, Dr. Funk, that's absolutely true. Reggie, let's see. It just jumped. I was so on this. Hold on. It just jumped on me. Reggie used to work together for kids, still married, just out of him. <sighs> it's cold out here in these streets. What's up, Mentor Shelly? What's up, Rudy Lon? Nathan, what's going on? What's up, Wayne Johnson, RJ300? Yeah, I see a lot of people don't want to get into the complicated part of book loads and dispatching. That's where the real money is. Nathan Harris, I've been listening to you for about two years. Your information helped me get my LLC and business up and running. My job is to let me go six months ago, and I was straight. That's stuff I love to hear. I've been hearing that every year that people have taken action, and then when they get let go, they're like, oh, okay, I got more time for my thing. That's an awesome place to be. Congratulations. What's up, Anthony Johnson? I don't know anything about welfare, Yolanda. Uh, Derek Cooper, what are your thoughts on ATM business? I, I have none either way. I, I don't know anything about it. All right, Tyrone, get your truck. Kaser Sosa, how do you get contracts once you buy a truck? That's where becoming a salesperson is. It's very helpful. That's what you're doing. You're selling a service. You got to figure out who has a load. Then you got to figure out who directs the load to the truckers and you got to call them thank you anthony johnson uh ish no uh, i have not called anyone i said this is what's going to happen and i'm going to explain to you why i'm doing it this way basic financial education I'll get that done and you guys will be added to the third tier. And this is why, because I can send emails out. I can talk to people and four or five months later, I'm still going to have someone that's like, Hey, how do I log in? I'm not doing that anymore. And then this will be the last thing. So it's going to happen in February. All right. I think we got to the end. Uh, the American lifestyle is infectious. It's strong when you move here, but get weathered in time. The corporate. Well, the American. The American lifestyle. Isn't really grounded in reality. The American lifestyle is funded on credit and debt. And at some point, everybody's got to pay the piper. 
the chickens coming home to roost. One of the best things you can do for yourself, if you don't start a business, is to get yourself out of debt. If you can get rid of your car note, and if you can get rid of all your credit card bills, that would be so helpful in your financial future. Because what are your three biggest bills? Taxes, your house payment, and your car. Those are your three biggest bills. So if you can get rid of the car, you know, I, having a house payment. All right, here we go. We should have sound now. All right, having a house payment is not a problem to me. The, the three biggest buckets of money coming out of your income are taxes, your house payment, and your car payment. If you can get rid of your car payment and you can start an LLC holding stuff structure and reduce your taxes, you could literally give yourself thousand dollars a year back. So, yeah, because most people don't make enough money to pay off their house very quickly, and in some cases, that you know, depend on what you're doing. Because once again, everybody has different stuff that you can use to tax the house as a tax dodge. So, but yeah, the package is real. I looked at how I grew up. And I looked at what was taught to me and I should be just some guy working in a coal plant or a steel mill in Alabama. Well, at this point I would be at retirement age if I had started out of high school and no, 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 no. All right. So there is none there yet, but there will be. If you need any help, there will be some courses in one comment. You just check them out. And today is Thursday. So we should be finishing up the basic financial course tomorrow. And then we start next week. Invest yourself. Once again, whatever you pay for the basic financial course, you, you don't have to uh, pay that again. The way the tiers are set up is the second tier are, you know, invest in yourself will include the basic financial education course. Because, you know, as YouTuber, I know from years and years of experience that someone five months from now or maybe next month is going to come in and like, oh, I want that. And one of the ways that I screwed myself was I was changing programs around that. I, I probably cost myself millions of dollars. Didn't even know it. So that just won't happen in the future. So it'll be available forever and ever. And it'll be a sane, sensible way of doing stuff. And then once I get moneyincomeprofit.com together, then I will get into some type of another mail channel. But I, I need a break. The negativity, the the fighting, it was just ridiculous. It was just ridiculous. So I, I was like, you know what? Y'all win. Y'all got this. I'm, I'm like making, what, one-fifth of the money over here that I am at the other side? See you later. Uh, Sumo, been listening to you for about three months. Been taking all the overtime I can get. 
been paying off debts like crazy. And the first time I ever had over five hundred dollars in my account. Thank you, man. Uh, congratulations. You're doing a lot of the right things. And that five hundred dollars can turn into five thousand and that five thousand can turn into ten thousand because many people talk about emergency fund. Right. I feel that everybody needs 10 to 20K in the bank, not in the 401k, not in the stock market, cash money in the bank, because most normal emergencies, maybe your car needs to be repaired, maybe you blew a tire, maybe someone got sick, maybe you need to have a two filled, thousand bucks, two thousand dollars is gonna handle that. But everybody needs attitude money. And if you had twenty thousand dollars in your bank account and no debt, be very hard for a job to mistreat you. You'd be like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'll not be mistreated. I will be not mishandled. I'm out of here. So that's one of the things. So Sumo, congratulations. That's a beautiful thing. Tyrone Jones. Hey, Glenn, do you recommend you do your LLC yourself or legal Zoom? I recommend you do your LLC yourself. That's all I'll say on that publicly. Chad Michael Harding, why don't you keep gold instead? Cash loses. This will be in the course because uh, this whole thing about cash loses value. Cash loses value over decades. It does not lose value over one and two years. Not a lot. Not enough to really count. And um, I have actually quite a bit of gold. Matter of fact, let me show you what I posted on. I don't even know if I'm logged into that account on this page. I'm going to show you just what I posted. Uh, on my page. Just the other day. All right. You see that? That's gold. I got my first gold in 2000, I think 2000, 2001. And I still have it. I have quite a bit of gold that I got in this range down here. The 2000, I got a lot of gold that I got here. Um, and I got gold here. And the thing is, I was getting my gold at such a vast discount. I remember when I used to, oh, I used to actually sell gold on eBay. I remember 10 karat gold was 520 a gram. 520. And then 14 karat was like $7. And I used to sell gold bracelets and stuff on eBay. And I was just, found, I just got curious to where gold was. Cause if you notice that gold Starting around 2010, it's not dropping back down here. Man, I should have did the 30 year, but you know, it went during the recession. I think it's going to go back up, but look where it, it's just not really it dropped down to a thousand in 2016 and then recovered. It's not really dropping that much. So um, gold it should only be part of your portfolio. Uh, gold should be maybe five, ten percent at most. I got more than that. Well, I don't know. I haven't really checked the prices yet, but um, I got quite a bit from the storage auction days, like a lot, <laughs> quite a bit. And that, that's going to be some of this part of the course because you're not going to lose. All right, tons and tons of money by leaving your money in the bank for a year or two. It's just not going to happen. Anthony Johnson, when starting a holding company, can I fund it? Yeah, I'm actually doing one myself right now. Okay, yeah, let's see. What are your thoughts on being a sign? Ooh, I would not do that. <laughs> Unless they, if I would, I would have to be a business partner to do something like that. I would not just be a signer. That's crazy. There's a lot of risk to you. 
Well, anyway, once again, links up for below if you need help. And today is Thursday. And then I should be finished with your basic financial education course Friday or this weekend. And then next week we start investing yourself, which will be wild. All right. So everyone have a wonderful day. I will see you guys later.